feels like holidays are ready. I got my dingalingas going. I don't know if you guys can hear them. I can hear them. Ding -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling. I like a reindeer. All right, let me just make sure uh, that everybody can hear me. James is saying hi too. <laughs> All right, awesome. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna wait for everybody to discover this, to find where they're going. I understand sometimes it takes a few minutes. So let's get organized here. It is time. Hi, Anne. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. It's good to see you. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so I am going to... Hmm, this is not working for me. Not to worry. Awesome sauce. All right, let me pin this one up to the top here so that everybody can see it. Perfect. Sometimes it's difficult to find your way in here. <laughs> Where is this live meant to be? Okay, and then I also, uh, uh, there's so many different things to do. All right, team, if you're there with me, give me a big hello today. It's so good to see you guys. And then I can pin to the top. All right, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Hi, everybody. Love it. Love it. I love it. Okay, here we go. Cool, cool, cool. Hello, Bev. I can't see who that is, but that's okay. Hi, Connie. Hello. Let me have a look in here because then I can see everybody's comments and see the people who aren't on stream here, which is totally awesome. All right, all right, all right. Oh, hi, Georgette. How are you doing? Okay, awesome. Let me load up the other side too. All right, I'm very excited about today. I put together a really cool roundup for you guys. I think we're going to have some fun. Actually, when do we not have fun? Let's be honest here. Perfect. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> this way seems to take an eternity, but that's okay. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool potatoes. All right, all right, all right. There we go. Okay. Yay. All right. Perfect. Okay. There we go. All right, team. Well, you know what? We've got a bunch of people here today, which is amazing. So uh, we're going to dive in and get started, which is super exciting. So today we're talking all things holiday photography, which I love that I'm very excited about. Um, and I'm super excited about this because some of our mastery students have chosen um, holiday photography as their topic for this month's project, which is kind of fun. So I, a bunch of those guys are on here today, um, which is perfect because, yeah, I've got lots of tips and things that are going to be really great and hopefully very helpful, which is super cool. Um, Merry Christmas, Polly. It's great to see you here, my dear. Oh, my goodness. Super, super cool. Okay. Um, so I've got uh, five tips that I'm going to share with you to get started today. Plus, I have the roundup of everybody's questions here with me as well. And so I'm going to get through those ones. And then um, to round it up, um, I'm going to open the floor to even more questions. Okay. So I'm just making sure I have my questions up here. All right. So if you guys have questions in your brains, um, you can ask them anytime throughout this. Uh, you just pop them in the chat there for me. Um, if I can't see who it is, I'm just going to ask whoever asked that question to write their name in as well. So StreamYard is a bit funny. Um, actually, it's super handy and very useful. It's just that you have to give StreamYard permission to leave a comment so I can see who you are. Otherwise, I just see your comment without a name, which is totally fine too. I'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Perfect. Hello, Lauren. Okay, awesome. So let's dive in here. All right. Um, so tip number one here today on our holiday photography. Now, one of the things that we really love to do is create beautiful bokeh in our photos. Now, bokeh is essentially the blurry background. And if anybody knows how to actually say it properly, feel free to chime in here um, because everybody says it a little bit differently. But bokeh is the ability for us to create those beautiful blurry backgrounds. And one of the things that I want to remind you guys about is that bokeh, the best bokeh is created when we have good distance between our subject and the background. So instead of having our subject and background really close to each other, if we move our background away, we actually get better bokeh. So what does this mean? This means that when we're taking photographs of our family or family shots um, or group photos or photos outdoor, 
outdoors, whenever we want to create that beautiful blurry background, those gorgeous, you know, sort of blurred out dots, that kind of that, uh, that really Christmassy feel where you see Christmas lights, but you don't see the Christmas lights. When we want to create this kind of bokeh, what we need to do is move our subject further away from our background. So this is a little counterintuitive because when you go, oh, I would love to take a, uh, a family photo this Christmas. You know, everybody's here. That's fantastic. Go and stand in front of the tree. Well, if you have them standing in front of the tree, like right in front of the tree, then you have no distance between your subjects in the background, which means that you're going to see all of the Christmas lights in perfect clarity. They won't be blurry at all. OK, so my biggest tip for taking photographs of subjects in front of Christmas lights is to make sure you create some distance so that you get that beautiful blurry background, okay? And that can also mean that you need to change the angle at which you're taking a photograph so that you create that distance. Okay, so in this case with Charlotte here, getting the Christmas tree in the background meant having to sort of get down and move around. And again, the distance there helps to create that beautiful blurry background. So whatever you guys are trying to do for this Christmas and these holiday photos, if you wanna get beautiful uh, Christmas bokeh, those with those really pretty lights, make sure you're moving your subject away from the background. That's tip number one. Awesome. Moving on to tip number two. I also put all my settings in here too, so you guys can go back and have a look again if you want to. Uh, and you guys can see uh, some of the settings that I've used to take these indoor shots here. We're really lucky in our space here. We've got a really nice big window bank um, where we usually put up our Christmas tree, so it's kind of nice and it makes things a little bit easier. But hopefully that gives you guys a starting point as we go, which is kind of fun too. Okay, next up, tip number two. All right. This is a really important tip and it's one that I always forget. This is also one of the biggest reasons why some of your Christmas photos don't turn out the way you want them to. So if you guys are scrolling in Instagram or Pinterest and you see these beautiful, beautiful scenes set up indoors and they've got the Christmas tree with the magical lights and the presents underneath and, and the throw rug over the couch, which is immaculate and the fireplace is on, which is all just so freaking perfect and gorgeous. And you think, okay, I can do this because my place is really nice as well. I've got some beautiful stuff in our house. Um, perfectly fantastic. I'm totally going to be able to capture that shot. And then the second you go to take it and you look at it and you're like, what? Like, that's not, that's not, that's not magic. That's not Christmas ethereal. That's like a Christmas tree standing in my living room, which kind of looks a little bit like chaos. So this is where tip number two comes in. And this is the same for outdoor photography as well. So if you're taking photographs outside, you've got to be really, really, really careful of this. All right. So it goes like this. Be careful with the bits and pieces in your shots. So if you're outside, be careful with the fire hydrant or the garbage cans or the, the, the electrical cords or the power lines. If you're inside, be careful about random toys, the mess on the walls, um, you know, the dog hair on your couch. These things all make a difference to the setup of your photo. So if you guys are encountering these things, my suggestion is this. Take some time with your setup inside. So if you really want to take those magical ethereal Christmas shots, then you'll need a good concentration of Christmas things, okay? Because remember, the more space you have in between your different items, the less of a theme it looks like. So a lot of these, uh, these Christmassy type photos have been sort of squished together, right? So your, your tree and your couch are, sh are shockingly close to each other, for example, okay? Which is also shockingly close to your fireplace. Please don't start a fire. All right, so you'll need to put things together, but also make, make sure that you're taking some time to remove the extra stuff out of your space, the stuff that actually detracts from your photograph. Um, here is another example of what stuff can look like. So in the first photo here, the extra stuff is actually just my husband walking behind my daughter, right? Totally changes the look and feel of the photograph when we take him out. But this second shot also has stuff in it too, right? It's got the cord down that left-hand side there. You know, I would have definitely, if I was actually paying attention to what I was doing, I would have definitely zoomed in and taken that part of it out or just changed my orientation so that you couldn't see it necessarily, okay? So that's my second really big tip is that make sure you are removing the excess stuff from your space. Now, when you're outside, sometimes this means that you need to... Uh, Choose a different angle, choose a different house, move up, move down, crop in, zoom out. Um, it's going to require you making some adjustments so that you don't see those extra bits and pieces because they can be really annoying. And often it can create hours of editing to try and take that stuff out or you just don't bother and it's in the shot forever anyway. Kind of like James here. I mean, you know, it's James, I love him, so whatever. But um, you guys see my point here. We've got to be careful about the excess stuff that goes on. All right, so that's tip number two. 
All right, guys, if you're just coming in with me, don't panic. All of this gets to be popped back up on the group. So you can watch it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Oh, hi, Marion. Oh, it's so good to see you guys here. Okay. Next up, tip number three. Christmas is so wonderful and the holidays are all about details. Every single holiday tradition has incredibly beautiful details to it. And so my tip number three is to look for the details. And I have some wonderful students who have just done this, for example. So this is a shot by Ramona and she's doing a whole series on Christmas and I love it. And it makes me so happy every time I see her photos. Um, but she's recently been wandering around her neighborhood and finding the details, right? Like how cute is this shot? Doesn't it just make you feel the magic of the holidays? Um, uh, Jana did like an entire series on these cute little details. And again, this just makes you feel like a Christmas wonderland. So instead of, you know, trying to capture all of the big things in your life, like the big light displays or the entire Christmas tree, um, what you can do is zoom in and capture some of the really pretty details like Stacy did on this shot, right? So look for the details. The details are special and they are magical and they are wonderful and they are part of what makes, you know, the holiday season so beautiful. So make sure you're looking for the details. Don't ever discount that, okay? Now, if you guys have any questions about this, just make sure you're popping the questions in there so I can see them too. Mm. All right, so tip number four for me is this one. Shutter speed is everything, okay? When it comes to taking photographs inside or outside, uh, as the sun goes down at nighttime of the lights of any of the other pieces that you are looking to capture, your shutter speed is everything. Because guys, if there's one thing you cannot fix in post-processing, it's a blurry photo. We can do just about everything else. We can reduce the noise. We can um, change our exposure. We can brighten a photo. We can darken it. We can change the white balance. We can do all sorts of things. But the one thing we cannot fix is if our photo is blurry. Okay. Hi, Rachel. Yes, you can absolutely watch it later. It's okay. No problems at all. All right. So if there's one thing we can't fix, it is a blurry photo. So please make sure that whatever you do, your shutter speed is fast enough. What does this mean? All right. So whenever you're taking a photograph of people, it needs to be at least 1 50th of a second. Not for you. I want to be clear. This is not for you. Why am I taking my phone? This is not for you taking a photograph. You can be more still than that. This is because people move. If you're taking a photograph of me, I drink a lot of coffee and I don't sit still very well. Okay. So I'm going to be moving. So when we're taking photographs of people, it has to be at least 1 50th of a second or faster, preferably faster if you can do it. Hello, Karen. Connie, I got your question. Thank you, my dear. Okay. Um, okay. So at least 1 50th of a second or faster. All right. So um, what we are looking to do here is not increase our ISO, particularly above 3200. If you have to go above 3200, you know, then you can do it and take the photo. Just know that above 3200, your photos get really noisy, which means that there's a lot of grain in it. And it just doesn't look quite as crystal clear or sharp as what you'd like for it to. So if we have to go above 3200, then we need to make some adjustments to the rest of our photo. And a few of the ways we can do this is to either add light, okay? So you can get a flashlight, go for it if it's at nighttime, okay? You can move to the light. So if you're taking photos of people and you have two choices, you've got either, you know, um, under a Christmas light display or, you know, in the middle of the street where there's no lights at all, you've got choices here, right? So move to the light, move to where you can put people in the light so that you can capture them properly, right? Another option is to use silhouetting. So silhouetting is where you have your subject completely in the dark and a bright background. Okay, it's a really pretty way uh, to, to take a shot um, and it's a little bit different, okay? And that's the key. Sometimes a little bit different is a really good thing. Um, so you can choose to use something like settling or, you know, if you're just in that spot where it's dark, the lights, you can't move, you can't add light, you can't really get a good silhouetting shot. Maybe it's just time to enjoy the moment. You know, just soak it up with your eyes. Put your camera down for a bit. That shot's probably not going to turn out beautifully anyway. Okay. So if you can't create enough shutter speed to take your photograph, sometimes just walking away is the best thing you can do, okay? And remember, the best part about the holidays times is all those experiences that we get to gather. 
Okay, so if it's not working out and if you're freaking out about your photography and you can't seem to create the right conditions, just enjoy the moment and soak it up into your heart and soul and love it for what it is, okay? The camera can come later. All right, so that's my key here. Shutter speed is everything at least 1 50th of a second. Remember guys, if you're zooming in on a photograph, so I use a wide angle for most of my holiday photography because it gives me the fastest shutter speeds, right? So I, at the widest angle, you know, if I shoot with my 35 mil, I only need it to be 1 50th of a second. But if you're zooming all the way in at 200 mil, for example, um, then you're gonna need your shutter speed to be a lot faster because otherwise you start to shake, okay? So just keep in mind, wide angle is gonna give you the best solution on that one as well. Okay, so shutter speed is king. Love it. Next up. Oh, sorry, some examples. So great examples. Again, by Ramona. She's again wandering around her city. Um, I love this shot because there's enough light here for her to capture it. Okay, I don't know what her settings were, but it is perfect. Okay, uh, and this is the perfect example of when you need at least 1 50th of a second to be able to capture these guys. They're in good amount of light. You capture the moment. It's a perfect shot to sit down and take, which I love. Okay, this is a fantastic example from Christy, and I know I think she took this one on her phone, so I love this even more because it's it's exactly what you can create. But what I love about this shot is I love that by having her daughter lie underneath the tree, her daughter is nicely illuminated, right? Her daughter is nicely lit. She's got enough light on her face to be able to capture this photo. Having having her daughter stand in front of the tree means that she's going to be really dark. But because of the composition of this shot lying down underneath the tree, she's got lots of light on her face. And that's part of what creates this magical ethereal shot. I just love this. It's so pretty. All right. And the other thing to do is to look for those lighting situations where you can use what light is available to you. So it doesn't always have to be dark. Sometimes you can actually capture the beauty of the brightness of the light around you as well. Okay. Can I move myself? One minute. Here. Nope. Whoa. I'm very big now. That's that's what I wanted to do. Okay. So now you can see the settings on that shot. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So make sure that you're looking for the light and you're capturing that anyway, even if you've got a really bright space. All right. My final tip before I get into our question and answer time is this one. All right. The magic of the holiday seasons, it gets really dark really early here. Like it was nine o'clock this morning and the sun was just cresting um, when I was dropping Charlotte off to school. All right. So we spend a lot of time in the dark over the holiday season, which means that the holidays are all about light. And there are so many different interesting types of light that you guys can look at to capture. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to start looking for the interesting light. Okay. So oftentimes because it's cold, we get sort of fireplaces, um, that kind of stuff. So I would highly suggest looking for interesting lights, uh, light shots using fire. I'll show you an example in a minute. Um, a dense concentration of lights gives you really great bokeh. Um, if you've got just one light and then one light and then one light, you're not going to get as beautiful backgrounds in your photographs. So make sure you're looking or, or pay attention to where you see dense concentrations of light. You always get better shots from those ones. Um, and then, of course, just look for those instances of contrast. So let's have a look at some examples here. Um, so firelight creates really beautiful, soft, contrasted types of light. Okay, so this one was actually taken indoors um, at a place we were staying, and there's a wood fireplace that's burning right next to Charlotte there, and she's sitting there looking at the fire. Ask her to turn and face you, and just really pretty light, right? So make sure you're looking for interesting light like these shots. All right, um, this is what I mean by a nice concentration of lights. So Tim on this shot, um, his Christmas tree is covered in lights. And so because there's a nice concentration of lights there, it creates a really pretty effect, which I just love, all right? And another example of looking for interesting lighting situations. And I love this shot um, that Gail took because of the angle of it as well. So she's kind of taking that perspective of somebody actually sitting in the chair, you know, shooting through the fence post with the framing, really pretty light sources here. And so again, she's looking for where the interesting light is and creating something special based on that. The interesting light in this case was not her sitting on the chair and shooting. It was shooting up because of the lights on the top as well. She gets the string lights going as well. So I just love that shot. Super duper one of my favorites. Okay. And then looking for contrast, where can you find contrast in your photographs and capturing that contrast is a really fantastic thing to do. So if you can find the contrast, hundred percent use it um, and, and go for it there, which is very, very cool. All right. So they are my five tips and nope, one more. There's another shot of contrast. Again, changing your angle up, having a look at how the light reflects onto your subjects um, can create some really, really pretty effects. All right. So make sure you're looking for the light. Um, lots of great lighting opportunities during the holiday season. 
All right, perfect. Now, I have a whole list of questions to get through today. So if you guys have any other questions that I haven't addressed yet, please make sure you're popping them in the chat now so that I can see them. Um, and I am going to start ticking off some of the questions that have already come in. All right, so my first question that I'm going to talk about today is one by Georgette. Okay, so bear with me here. This is a question. She said, my holiday question um, pertains to taking photos of outdoor lights. All right, so when taking photos of outdoor lighting, should we be using aperture priority or manual? Any suggestions on shutter speed and aperture settings? Okay, so the biggest question here is when we're outside, do we want aperture priority or manual? This short and simple and very concise answer is it doesn't matter. Always choose whatever you are most comfortable photographing in. So be that aperture priority or manual, doesn't matter, just choose one, okay? Um, yeah, so it doesn't matter if you're shooting on aperture priority or manual. If you are shooting handheld, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Sorry, what I was going to say is if you're shooting on a tripod, you will. I would highly suggest using manual focus. Um, again, if you guys remember from our night photography course, our manual focus gives you a chance to dial it in a lot more precisely, which is pretty cool. All right, so, um, and then what else have we got here? Okay, so, right, so any suggestions on shutter speed and aperture settings? All right, remember I spoke about uh, shutter speed is king. Right. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shooting for it or, or striving for at least one fiftieth of a second when we're taking photos of people. Um, if you if there's no people in your photos and you want to capture, you know, say a, a nice long exposure of a lighting scene, um, pop your camera on a tripod and then nobody cares what your shutter speed is. That's even better. Right. So you can have as long a shutter speed as you would like. Uh, the key here is that if you're taking photographs handheld outside, what you'll want to be doing is opening up your aperture. So biggest amount of light coming in, smallest f-stop which gives you a nice fast shutter speed, and then increasing your ISO, right? Remember team, if you need to increase your ISO above 3200, you probably need to make a change to your photo. So either add more light or move to the light or um, is, is create some light somehow so that you don't have to use too much of your ISO and create those really, really noisy photos, all right? So uh, my suggestion is pop on a wide angle lens so that you've got plenty of light coming in. So 50 mil or below, um, we use our 35 mil a ton here because it's a really pretty lens. It lets in tons of light and I can shoot at 1.4. Um, low f-stop, high ISO, and then you should be good to go. Remember, no ISO is above 3200. It's just not worth it. Perfect. All right. Um, I hope that answers that, Georgette. The second part of Georgette's question was, should we be changing the white balance? I've seen videos suggest to use daylight or tungsten settings. All right, so remember, if you guys are shooting in raw, um, doesn't really matter what your white balance is, so just don't worry about it. Um, the second thing is that even if you're not shooting in raw, white balance is just so easy to fix. <laughs> it's like, um, it takes, it's a two second adjustment pretty much in any editing program. So I would highly suggest just don't worry about it. OK, um, when you get back and you pop your, your photo on your phone or your computer, you may choose to make an adjustment then. And again, it's a really simple adjustment. So it kind of it's, it's one of those things that's it's just not really worth having to worry about in the moment. You guys have got enough things to worry about, making sure you've got great composition and you've got great shutter speed. I would just let your white balance stay on auto. And then when you get home, you can quickly adjust it as you need to. OK, um, perfect. All right, so Anne is up next. All right, hey Anne. Oh, and hey Georgia, I know you guys are both with me today. All right, so how do you pick up the darker decorations outside? So like the inflatables, the yard decor, um, sorry, when they have a bright one color lights all around the house. Okay, this is a great question because this happens a lot. <laughs> all right, so what, 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 what we're talking about here is that um, most of our light decorations, and if I think about sort of our light decorations too, so we've got a series of puppies outside. They're super cute. It's just inflatable. They've got like a big candy cane through their mouth. They're adorable. I love them. Um, and then we have some lights on our trees and, and lights all around, okay? Um, the catch here is that the puppies are the cutest part of this scene, but they're also the darkest part of this scene, right? Because the lights around it totally out out um, outshine, essentially, uh, the puppies in terms of brightness. So what do you do about this? Because this can become a bit of a problem. So, um, and then also Anne added to this, um, how to capture people's faces in the same conditions. And it's the same kind of thing, because if I was to go and get, if I were to go and get my children to stand next to my puppies, they would also be dark around the bright lights. So this is a fantastic question, Anne. And what you've got here is you've got a great contrast, it's just in the wrong direction. Right, so you've got dark faces, bright lights. Not really useful, you sort of want bright faces, 
dark background. Um, so the best option for this is to choose your subject. What do I mean by this? So either you're taking a photo for the lights, in which case your extra pieces don't really matter anymore, okay? Um, or you're taking photos for your subjects. Now, when you're taking photos for your subjects, you wanna be exposing properly for your subjects, right? So if your subjects are coming out dark because the lights are fooling your camera, what you will need to do then is overexpose for your subjects, okay? And overexposing means that your subjects come out brighter, which is great, and it means that your lights and your background's gonna come out a little bright as well, right? That's okay because you can adjust the balance later, but also, the big and the most important part of all of this scene was your subject. So make sure that when you're doing this, you're exposing for the thing that matters, all right? And that's probably gonna mean having to overexpose a little bit. So I hope that helps, all right? The next thing you can do is you can zoom in more. So instead of capturing the lights as well, if you just want the, uh, the inflatables or you just want the person's face, if you can zoom in on them, then what happens is your camera will automatically adjust for the new light. And it's kind of like overexposing, you're gonna end up with a brighter photo. Perfect. Um, the final thing that you can do is if you pop your camera on a tripod, this is really great for static scenes. So like photos of, of photos of houses, for example, um, without people in front of them. Uh, so if you've got a static scene, so that means nobody's moving in and out, all that kind of jazz, you could definitely try an HDR, right? So remember, and for an HDR, it means underexposed to overexposed. I am just going to stop this for a sec. And then you can just see me. Okay. Um, so that's the other way to go about that. And an HDR could create some really, really cool effects. So I totally try that. Hopefully that helps my dear. All right. Um, Ramona's up next. So uh, Ramona's question is regarding low light and fast moving subjects like pets and kids. All right. Uh, so she's still having a little bit of trouble getting uh, by, with getting blurry photos because the kids are constantly in motion. All right, so, and she was also mentioning that her white balance was set for indoor. All right, so first of all, I just want to clarify this. Your white balance setting won't change anything about your shutter speed, okay? Um, it's just purely the color cast of it. So whatever white balance you're set on, you can just leave it there or put it back to auto, all right? I, again, I kind of, I'm one of those photographers like it's just on auto until I need to switch it. All right, um, so, so in this case of blurry kids running around, um, this is all about shutter speed, all right? And you, you nailed it on the head because you said this in your email, Ramona. So I, I know you're totally right there with it. At the end of the day, guys, when you're taking photographs, it, it, photography is all about light. We can't create really great shots without paying attention to where our light is coming from, right? Um, so in this case, basically, we have to figure out a way to either add light or to get them to slow down so that we can create the shutter speed we need. So... Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're shooting at 1.8, so lowest f-stop you can, okay? Um, increase your ISO, but if you have to increase your ISO above 3200, then you need to do something else, right? So uh, either, you know, turn on the overhead lights or <laughs> add a flashlight or um, get uh, get your kids to move, get the kids to move to a different part of the house that's brighter um, or, you know, ask them to slow down a little, <laughs> Can you guys just stop for a sec? Like, just stop quickly and then go. Okay, um, so those kinds of things will help you to be able to capture that motion. The other thing that I can say is that um, a wider length angle lens does help. So uh, we use our 35 mil a lot indoors. Um, a wider angle lens allows you to capture, um, basically it lets in more light and it also means that you don't have to have as fast a shutter speed to capture motion. Okay, so your wide angle lens is a really good way to go. Definitely don't use a zoom lens when you've got kids zooming around. But just remember, team, if you're trying to take photographs of kids running around in the dark, it's just not all you can do with that situation, right? There's, you, you will end up capturing blur pretty much no matter which way you slice or dice that, all right? You're going to have to add some light into the situation. But Ramona, at the end of the day, it's all about your shutter speed. So however you can create a faster shutter speed, that's what you've got to do. All right. Awesome. And then Evelyn has a question that is not so much related um, to holiday photography, but more to sunrise or sunset pictures. Okay, so she has taken photographs of the sun um, with her Nikon D3500, and she's having issues uh, capturing the vivid colors. So now, um, Evelyn, I with the one photo that you have there, I think I have an idea, but I don't have quite enough information to know exactly whether or not I'm on the right track here. But my suggestion on the shot that you shared with us is this. Um, I... My initial impression is that the photograph you took of the sun there is a little dark. So um, the sun is obviously 
an immensely bright source. And um, please don't take photographs of the sun when it's at its peak or anything pretty much above sunrise or sunset. Otherwise, you'll burn out all the elements in your camera and it will be kaput. Um, so make sure you're just doing it on the horizon line there. That's pretty much the only time you can do it. Um, and so... And so because the sun is so bright, what it's doing is it's tricking your camera into thinking there's more light. And so you're actually taking a darker photo than you expect. So in this case, I suspect what's happening is that because you're shooting at one two hundredth of a second, your camera doesn't have enough time to capture all of that beautiful ambient light that's creating that red. OK, so my suggestion for you, Evelyn, is to increase your shutter speed to make it longer. Yes, your sun becomes brighter, but I think that will give you a better chance to capture all those beautiful colors around that sunset as well. OK. Hopefully that helps. All right. Now we have TJ. Um, what colors are best? What colors are a no no for the best Christmas family portraits? Okay, so the colors, um, any really bright color becomes very difficult for. Um, uh, for Christmas photography, not so much because of the color itself, but because of what other people choose to wear. All right. So, um, CJ, I would say there isn't really a color I would say absolutely stay away from. I think a bright red can become really intense. Um, so maybe um, less red or maybe stay away from the red just a little bit. Um, but, you know, who doesn't love red and green? Really, it's super Christmassy. Um, but my suggestion is, is making sure that your people who are coming in are wearing really neutral colors. So either whites or blacks, um, just super neutral so that they don't sort of um, clash with the scene that you have. And that's probably the biggest suggestion that I can give um, for you on that one, CJ. But I love the way your photography is coming out. It's super cute. Okay, team, do we have any other questions? Is there anything else um, that is pressing on your minds? I did speak very quickly today, so we've got some time on our hands. Um, if you guys are finalizing your last questions, uh, yeah, good. Okay, if you guys are um, still with me, then there's only one thing that's left to say, and it's this. Totally self-serving, and I know this, but for Christmas, if there is somebody in your life who loves photography, please don't buy them things. The reason that you don't buy your photography loving friend a thing is that it might not be the right thing. So you might be like, I'm going to get this. There's these cool set of filters that go on the camera, on their phone camera or something like that. Or you might be like, oh, there's this really cute little camera bag, but they might already have one. Um, or I'm going to get them a hand strap, but they might prefer neck straps. Um, buying things for your photography loving friends is generally a recipe for them putting that thing in the cupboard and forgetting about it. Sounds harsh. It's also kind of true. So this Christmas, please, whatever you do, buy your photography loving friend an experience. All right. Buy them something that helps to enhance their learning, to enhance their enjoyment of photography. Buy them, um, you know, a, a, an admission to the Christmas lights display or um, to the ice festival that's going on down the road. Buy them um, anything else that you anything else that you kind of you're thinking about that they might really want. Even go as far as buying them a gift certificate. OK, so if you're like, I think you might want this, but I'm just going to buy you a gift certificate to that camera store so you can go and buy exactly what it is that you want when you are ready for it. OK, so. Um, yeah, and obviously you should totally buy them a photography course. Three really important reasons why. One, less things in the world are good. OK, number two, though, and these are really important. Learning a new skill is an incredible way to enhance somebody's confidence and perception of themselves. So when you guys go from being kind of mediocre at something to truly amazing at something, it does wonders for your confidence, wonders for your mental health. Uh, it is an incredible way to boost your self-esteem uh, and to start feeling fantastic about you know, yourself and what you can accomplish. You can gift that to somebody else. You can gift those feelings to somebody else by gifting them a photography course. And that is truly exceptional. OK, so if you guys are stuck on a photography gift, you shouldn't be. You should absolutely absolutely give them a photography course and don't forget guys we do have gift certificates that start as low as 50 bucks okay so you really can't go wrong at anything like that now the only other thing that i would say about gifting something like a photography course is that you are going to be for sure the greatest gift giver of all time people are going to love you for doing this because uh you will be transforming their world which is very very cool so Go ahead and be the best gift giver you can be this year. Check out our gift certificates. I'm going to pop them in the chat. We have uh, gift certificates for, for in-person courses in one of our locations across the country here in Canada. And we have online gift certificates. So 
yeah, they're fantastic because they're totally not COVID related. Uh, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. You can always take an awesome online photography course. And for those of you guys who've taken photography courses with us before, you know how interactive and fun they can be. All right. So, um, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions that crop up. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining me today. It is always more fun when there are more people on board and you guys are all totally amazing. Um, stay tuned for the replay if you're watching the replay and feel free to say hello and ask your extra questions if you have them. Um, I will happily get back to you and uh, as, as soon as I can. Um, I'm going to be writing down those photography tips for you guys as well in a blog post so you can come back and read them too. And otherwise... Happy holidays, everybody. I can't wait to see more of your holiday photography. I am loving it. You post that up on the community as much as you can because that just brings so much joy to all of us here in the office. And um, I will be talking with you all very, very soon. All right. Happy holidays, guys. And I will talk to you soon.